Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find linear regression or line of best fit in Excel. If you are in an algebra class, you will put it in the form y equals mx plus b. Some stats textbooks also use this formula. If you are in another stats class, your textbook may have the formula y hat equals a plus bx. Uh, for this equation, m is the slope and B is the y-intercept, so where it crosses the y-axis. For this equation, A is the y-intercept, and B is the slope. So those are the two things that we're going to find using Excel so that we can come up with the equation. And then after we get the equation, if it's meaningful, we are going to make predictions for the systolic blood pressure for the given ages below and the way we determine if they're meaningful is we look at our x values that were originally given and we find our minimum and our maximum. So our minimum value is 16 and our maximum value is 64. And so anything between 16 and 64 would be a meaningful prediction. Anything outside of that range would not be a meaningful prediction. So if we look down here, we can see that 53 would be a meaningful prediction, 25 would be a meaningful prediction, and this one would be not meaningful. Okay, and the reason for that is that 85 does not fall between 16 and 64. So I already have these values typed into Excel. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up Excel. You can pause the video if you want to type it into Excel so that you can go along with it. Uh, if you want to just watch and then try it later, that works too. So what we have is all of our data points already listed in Excel. It's a good idea before you come up with a linear regression line or line of best fit to look at the actual trend of the data. So it's easy to do that in Excel. You would just highlight your information. This quick analysis tool should pop up. If it does not, I will show you how to get the, um, the scatter plot uh, using another means. So with this, we would just select a scatter plot and we can see that it comes up and there's definitely a linear trend with this. So the line of best fit is appropriate. So you always want to look at this to make sure it's not curved or there's no relationship between them or there's an, um, you could have a quadratic would be more appropriate. So you always want to look to make sure that linear is appropriate before you start with the data. Okay. Um, so we did see that that is appropriate. And like I said, if this tool did not come up, what you could do is come up here to insert. And in the center, you can see the charts. This one right here would be your scatter plot. And so you would just select the scatter plot and you can see that it puts our X coordinates on the X axis and our Y scale on the Y axis. Okay. All right. So now let's go ahead and use Excel to help us find the slope and the Y intercept. So I'm going to find slope first. And so all I would have to do is type equals slope. And no, notice on here that it says known Y's first. So you want to select the Y coordinates first. And then you want to select the X coordinates. To me, it would be uh, more natural to do X first and then Y. But in here, they did decide that you want your known Y values first and then your known X values and close your parentheses, hit enter, and that would return your slope. In order to find the Y intercept, you just type in Y. Um, equals intercept and then again it's known y's comma known x's okay and if you need to find the correlation coefficient uh, that also tells you how strongly the data is correlated and it gives you an indication of whether the line is appropriate. Again, you have to look at the scatter plot because sometimes with an exponential model, it will have a high correlation coefficient, but a line is not appropriate. Okay, uh, so remember that the correlation coefficient tells you how linear something is. So if you need to find that, all you would do is type in equals correlation. And for this one, you're actually going to select X first and then your Y values. So 
they made it confusing, but you would do x and then y. And you can see that the correlation co coefficient is 0 0.9677 if I rounded it to four places, which is a very strong model. This tells us that uh, the model is very strong. The relationship is very linear. The closer this is to one or negative one, the stronger the relationship. If the correlation coefficient is positive, that means that you have a positive slope and that your... Um, that your association is positive. It's going up from left to right. All right, just so you know what all of those are so we keep track of everything when we're coming down here to make predictions. Okay, so I'm going to use Excel to help me make predictions. Um, let me go back first before I do that and we'll write down our slope. Make sure that, especially if you're working in a, an online homework platform, that you read very carefully what um, place they want you to round to. Usually it's three or four decimal places. So if you are in an algebra class, you would write this out as y equals 1.629x plus 80.241. If you're in a stats class where you're using this formula, you would write it out as y hat equals 80.241 plus 1.629x. Okay, so we're going to use those to help us make predictions. Uh, I will show you the way that I would prefer to do because it's more accurate. So if I were making predictions, and like I said, we're going to only make predictions for the 53 and the 25. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in the value that I want to make the prediction for. So I'm going to use 53 there. And then down below, I'm just going to plug it into the equation. And it doesn't matter what format you use, whether you do the A plus B X or you do the M X plus B. It just matters that the slope goes with the predicted value. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use the M X plus B. So I'm going to select my slope and then I'm going to multiply that by the predicted value. And the reason I'm doing this is because then I can go in and just change the 53 to the 25 and not have to retype the formula five times or however many times you have to make predictions for. In this case, we're only making two, but sometimes you have to make more than that. Okay, and then we would do plus our Y intercept. And when we hit enter, it will plug in the values. It will do 1.62883975 times 53 plus 80.24. Okay, so this is the most precise predicted value for the 53. Okay, if you are working in an online homework platform, it is possible that they want you to round first, which I don't advise because when you round, it can throw off the calculations. Uh, but I would go ahead and... Like, so if you plug in 166.56 um, and it gives you the wrong answer, you may want to try going back and just rounding it to whatever place your homework platform told you to. So let's say that it told us to round to three decimal places. Then I can type in, type in the slope 1.629 times my predicted value because that's my X plus my Y intercept, which would be 80.2. And then when I hit enter, notice it gives me 166.578. So it's slightly different. It's not a big difference. If they had you round it to the nearest tenth, you would get the same answer in both um, places. But if it told you to round to the nearest hundredth or two decimal places, then you would get a different answer and your homework platform may mark it wrong. So the advantage of typing in the predicted value into here is that I can go in and I can now change that value. So let's say that I wanted to do for the 25 and I hit enter, it'll automatically return my answers. So if I needed to go in again and maybe they said 35, then I would put down my answer. So the nice thing about using the formulas in Excel is I can change this value and it will automatically change the answers so that I don't have to do it over and over again. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.